This is the first of many roller coasters that I have already reviewed from back in the early days of Coaster Studios that I'll be taking a new look at to present new perspectives, show off some more current footage, and of course, hopefully provide some entertainment, especially for those that maybe didn't get a chance to watch the old review. In this case, the last time I talked about Griffin was back in 2014. At the time I filmed that, Griffin was only one of two operating dive coasters in America. Since then, we've seen the addition of Valraven, Yukon Striker up in Canada, and Emperor is opening up soon at SeaWorld San Diego. I've also had the opportunity to ride several dive coasters in Europe, and what that has done is allow me to really view the dive coaster model with a new perspective, especially the newer ones since B&M is trying out different things, like adding various inversions that you didn't typically see on a dive coaster, or adding vest restraints. And so then it's interesting to go back and look at one of the earlier dive coasters like Griffin and see how it stacks up. Now this was the first dive coaster I ever rode. I grew up going to Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and when I was a kid, this ride was certainly intimidating. I mean, for someone that didn't ride big roller coasters, who wouldn't be intimidated looking up over 200 feet in the air watching riders get hung over a vertical drop before plunging straight down at over 70 miles per hour? That's pretty scary. And that's why this ride is a big crowd pleaser at Busch Gardens, excluding Pantheon, which has not opened yet at the time of this making that I know will be my favorite ride when it does open. At the moment, this is my favorite roller coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Yes, even more so than Apollo's Chariot. And I think one of the reasons for that is that this ride is consistent. It has run the exact same ever since it opened over a decade ago. Apollo's Chariot can't really say the same thing about. What I like about Griffin is that even though it is a one trick pony, it does what it does very well. In that regard, it's predictable. The ride is essentially made up of two halves and the second half is literally just doing the first half again, but smaller. And then you throw in a splashdown because why not? And that's what I like about the newer dive coasters is they've mixed it up a bit. I think one of the reasons why Griffin feels like a one trick pony is because it is repetitive. After you do a huge vertical drop and huge gentlemen, why would you want to do it again but smaller. But that does not mean that Griffin is a bad ride. If anything, it's one of the best dive coasters out there, even after all these years. I personally much prefer these restraints over the newer vest restraints that are going on a lot of those dive coasters. These restraints allow you to feel free when you're descending down that drop because Griffin provides some amazing floater airtime. When you're hanging over that drop and it releases, if you have some room, you feel like you're free falling. Probably because you are, but it's an amazing sensation. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's walk through some basics here. The ride is located in the New France section of the park. The only theming you're going to find is in the facade. It's a beautiful looking station, but it's probably the least themed ride in the park. It is a shame because theming a dive coaster is actually really easy when you think about it. Some of the ones in Europe have incredible theming, but that clearly wasn't a priority here. I mean, it's fine. They can have theming. Here we get bigger rides, so it works out. You have the option of boarding one of three rows, each 10 across. I don't think there's any coaster out there that has a longer row than 10 seats across. It's very impressive. And for that reason, I think it makes it very rewritable because for a traditional roller coaster, the front feels very different from the back. And I mean, to some extent, you still get that with Griffin. But here, the main differences are when you are on an end seat versus maybe a center seat. I absolutely recommend trying out both. Now, when you depart the station, you take a right-hand turn and start ascending up this lift hill. And let me just say, this is one of my favorite lift hills, not for any particular reason other than it's steep. The way the chain dog hits the anti rollback kind of makes a relaxing sound. Sometimes I like to lean my head back, close my eyes. I don't know why, it just feels so serene. Most people are probably freaking out, but I'm like, ah, oh, this is such a relaxing lift hill. Yeah, I'm weird, I guess. I'll tell you what was cool though. A couple years ago, I got to go up to the top of Griffin and walking around up there, you really realize how gorgeous the view is. So when you approach the edge, what happens is the train actually locks onto a second chain and that's what lowers you into a lock position where you're gonna hang for about five seconds. Now for something like this, the front row obviously has the best view. It's probably gonna be the most scary, but for the best free floating sensation, you wanna be in the back. The reason is while the front is hanging almost straight down, the third row is almost still level. Not quite, but you're nowhere near tilted as much. So when the train releases, you get whipped over. It's pretty great and before you know it, you're plunging towards the ground and hopefully you saw that giant coke bottle that they have painted on the floor that says say ah <laughs> clever product placement i see what you did there coke because yeah you'll be screaming all the way down to the bottom you're gonna pass underneath the bridge that you have to walk across to get to the station and you fly up into the ginormous emblem you're almost free floating as you reach the top you twist out and then hit your 
your mid course break run and you pretty much come to a dead stop here this second drop is not vertical like the first although it is close to vertical my guess is it's probably 80 degrees 85 degrees something like that you go through that second nimbleman and this is where griffin actually does something a little different there's a little pop of air time before you hit the water breaks now what's cool about this is it actually serves two different purposes one it just looks cool if you're standing off to the side watching the water shoot up you'll probably get soaked so it's actually a big attraction for kids probably not so much the parents but one of the greater purposes this does is slow down the train that's why they always have to have water in there because there are scoops on the back of the train that's what shoots up the water and it slows it down as it goes into this next turn griffin has three different systems of braking mag brakes magnetic brakes pneumatic brakes and then this is that last form of braking i think this is also one of those reasons why this ride is rarely ever open in the winter time because if it's too cold and that water freezes over griffin cannot operate so there's your nerd facts for the video overall griffin is super fun it's very rewritable it's also one of the smoothest coasters out there dive coasters in general are always smooth rides but griffin especially as of when this video is being made is 13 years old it's still running like new so how's it stack up to the other dive coasters well i don't think this has the strongest layout i'd probably give that to a ride like yukon striker or valraven but both of those have vest restraints and i think that takes away from the ride griffin has probably the best airtime on any dive coaster out there which in my opinion makes it one of the best is it my personal favorite maybe maybe not in terms of ride experience i'd say probably but if you want like a full package i mean a ride like baron 1898 is pretty hard to beat that has some of the best theming ever and is still a pretty good layout so that's definitely a contender but for its final score, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. It's definitely a solid attraction, one that you won't want to miss when you come to the park. Be sure to give several laps on it. I think this ride is absolutely a crowd pleaser. Unless you're really scared of heights or that free falling sensation, then I think just about anyone could enjoy this ride. But I want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on Griffin at Busch Gardens Williamsburg? Be sure to let me know all that down in the comments below. And of course, make sure to stay tuned for more coast reviews here at Coaster Studios. And I'll see you next time.